Yeah, the difference, uh, the main difference, I think, would be uh, the uh, the data that is stored in a data lake uh, that's stored in data lake in the data warehouse. And the data warehouse is smaller and more refined data that we can uh, uh, use it to like make sense of, uh, like for many business use cases, whereas the data lake just contains the raw data, uh, most often like quite large and undefined and also like needs uh, uh, processing and cleanup to like uh, get a mix out to make sense of the data where database is like uh, the a place where we store uh, business i mean informations from different endpoints or applications and that's also where is uh, the true source of like data where we can uh, also get uh, to load to the data warehouse or to our data lake to like do further processing or like we can also access that database to serve for our clients the data that they need actually we can query it uh, and uh, use it in our application yes thank you uh, Margaret? Um, I wanted to say uh, data warehouse is, for example, in a business, if someone has data from different Excel sheets, from Postgres, from Facebook, different sources of data, and um, I think all of them are stored in a data warehouse. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, and um, for a database, it's just the the different uh, tables that could be on spreadsheets, SQL or MS Access. And for data to go to a data warehouse, it has to go through um, the pipeline to transform and extract and load. Um, so different modeling, uh, uh, different types of models to get into the warehouse. And then a data lake is basically just a big dump of all your company's data it doesn't have to be structured it could even be videos of uh your your christmas party at the office yeah yes. right. uh, thank you so as you guys have said data warehouse is the more structured uh, format of our data and uh Okay, maybe let me start from data leaks. Data leaks are just dumps of data and they are not structured. You might just uh, dump so many data. Maybe it might be from IoT sensors, from customer review data, and any type of data that uh, isn't structured according to your business need. And when it comes to databases, databases are uh, structured. It might be relational or non-relational, but they are more structured and uh, it will conform more to your business need. And, uh, it has well-defined structure schema that can be used for your day-to-day -day business activity. And databases are mostly used for transactional types of uh, data. When you're working with transactional data types of data, the first thing or the first go-to things are databases. You'll uh, work with databases, you'll store your data in the, in the databases, and you'll also query and uh, fetch data from your databases. When it comes to data warehouses, data warehouses are also databases, but they are uh, mainly suited for uh, data analytics part of uh, business need. So when it comes to analytical purpose or when you want to uh, build some kind of dashboard or some kind of analytics out of your data, data warehouse are more structured and uh, uh, the, the way that they are used and the way that they are defined are more suitable for data analytics uh, and databases are more for transactional types while data leaks are not structured and it can be just the dumps of uh, any type of data source. And mostly the examples are, uh, you might use the uh, S3 bucket where you can just store some kind of data 
also blob storage and so on you can use any types of you, even snowflake you can use snowflake it's data warehouse but you can just dump the data that you have that you can you're collecting from multiple sources but you don't want to do that mostly you, you will be using snowflake as a data warehouse so that you can query data out of your data warehouse or uh, do some kind of analysis out of uh, the data that you have in your data warehouse and snowflake can be connected into uh, multiple analytics tools like power bi looker for uh, tableau and so on i think one of the sessions that uh, we are going to have on tomorrow is connecting uh, snowflake or data warehouse to an to an analytics tool and uh, building some kind of visualization for this week i think it's redash so you can directly connect uh, your analytics tool to the data warehouse and uh, perform some kind of analytics based on the populated data or based on the mart that you built on your data warehouse and you can gain an insight about uh, your data so snowflake was developed in 2012 and it's fully managed software as a service that provides single platform data for data warehousing data leaks data engineering data science data application development uh, secure sharing consumption of real time or share, share data. So as I've said earlier, you can use it for as a data leak, as a data warehouse, but mostly you see it being used uh, as a data warehouse. There are also some other alternatives that you can use. You can also use Redshift as a data warehouse. You can use the Google's also service. Google also has their own service for data warehouse. You can, you have other options, but Snowflake is uh, currently you will see in most job applications, especially if you are going uh, for the data engineering track, uh, you look uh, into Snowflake as one of the job requirements. So what's the that, that advantage of Snowflake? I think one of the uh, main advantage of Snowflake that I can speak about is their API access. They have a very good API access for multiple languages. If you are working on Python, on Flask or Django backend endpoints, uh, they have a very nice endpoint that you can directly connect with Snowflake, uh, dump your data, fetch data from Snowflake, and so on. Even if you are working in JavaScript, there is uh, an integration for Node.js, an API access for Node.js, and also for other languages as well. So they will give they give you a very good uh, API with the endpoint that you want, and for any types of uh, processing that you want to do on your data and it's similar ways to carry from the stage area and table so when you're working on data warehouses you might have a staged area in the in the final uh, production table that you are going to work on and there is a nice way of separation between the staged and the table format or the production format that you can work and it's also scalable solution for future needs one thing that makes snowflake uh, out of most other data warehouses it's it might be similar to others but to some but uh, one thing you can leverage from Snowflake is its scalability. Uh, its scalability, so you can easily scalable. You can easily scale your data based on the demand. So one advantage of using cloud computing is uh, the elasticity and the scalability of the cloud platform. And similar to that, Snowflake also provides uh, a, a, an easy and uh, sca a, an easy scalable is easy scalable way of uh, our data so that we won't we shouldn't be concerned about our size of the of the of, of our data we can easily scale up or scale down based on the data that we have and that's also advantage when it comes to the cost to the uh, cost of snowflake and it's huge huge possibility to commercialize our data user access controls and one other thing that is also very uh, the, that comes very handy of uh, when using snowflake is it's different uh, roles when using snowflakes so you can have the account admin the sysadmin and other multiple roles that you can use and when working in a company uh, different people will be assigned different roles. we'll try to follow the list we'll try to give the least privilege for each users and each user with their privilege can or can work on their uh, role without uh, getting another privilege or another access from Snowflake that they don't need to. So some might only have a uh, privilege to read data from the data warehouses uh, from the data warehouse and some might have write access, some might have uh, the privilege to add other uh, other users to the 
organizations and so on. So it gives you a very nice way of ordered access control when working on Snowflake for your organization. And it's very descriptive of the data in hand, availability of the trade disk data on Snowflake data uh, marketplace. And the other best thing about Snowflake is uh, mostly when working on web related projects, even data engineering, data science, uh, you will probably, you will most probably face, uh, you will probably work with JSON data or same structure data. And most databases aren't good when it comes to JSON data. Mostly our, most databases are structured databases and uh, it, it, it will become hard when you try to work on same structure data. But Snowflake, it has the ability to parse JSON files or same structure files also parquet XML and so on. So primarily, if you look on most uh, on most job requirements, you'll see that uh, they need uh, they need someone who can work on Snowflake and on same structure data. So if you have a same structure data, Snowflake comes handy, and there is uh, a processing tool that you can use that can process and work on JSON or any other same structure data. It can also automatically perform tuning. Uh, it computes queries so fast. Lots in, in our organization, when you, are, when you are working on an organization, you'll probably work with with a data with millions of records or even billions of records. And Snowflake uh, has the ability to compute or process data uh, very fast without uh, and without the issue or without the concern of uh, our our size of the Snowflake is the right type of. Uh, we have set if we have set the right types of size for our data because the more data that we get, we can easily scale up and uh, take more data in. And when 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 we are reducing the size of our data, we can easily scale down without worrying about the size of our snowflake. And this will also come handy to the cost. And some of the limitations uh, of Snowflake are it's limited to the number of rows, only 10K, which can be displayed in the dashboard, if the limitation. Uh, and the other one is limitations while accessing the stat, 1 million row, just to access the uh, rows, and limited types of floats when working on the dashboard. These are just some of the limitations, but mostly for the analytics part and for the dashboard, you can use other tools. And we can only use Snowflake to uh, store data and uh, perform some kind of analytics by connecting other analytical tools. And the second uh, tool that we are going to discuss about is Fivetran. Fivetran, as I said earlier, uh, Fivetran will perform the extract and the load part of an LT pipeline. So you will first need to extract data from different sources, and uh, Fivetran can. Uh, extract source uh, can extract data from um, multiple sources. It has about it has lots of connectors for source connectors as well as destination connectors, so that it can extract data from many sources and load it to your uh, desired destination. So it offers an automated data integration from source to destination and delivers ready-to-use connectors. And this is a no-code solution for a data engineering uh, pipeline implementation you will only be interacting with the user interface and set up uh, and uh, set, set up a connector for your source and set up a connector for your destination easily. So you'll just have to click some buttons to uh, create a connector for your source. And uh, also you'll be creating, you'll be clicking, you'll just be clicking some buttons to create, uh, to create a new destination and automatically load or ingest data from your source and back to your destination. It offers multiple pre-built connectors. Some sources are Amazon S3, Google Drive, Azure SQL database, Azure Group Storage, uh, social media data, and so on. So they have many uh, connectors for the source part and the, the, the destination part. And this makes it uh, really reliable. And it's, it's also very reliable and efficient when uh, processing your data. And it doesn't do much of processing. There is some kind of transformation that Python can do, but it's mostly used for the extraction and the loading uh, part of the LT pipeline. So this is just an example that uh, that you can find on their home homepage, on Python's homepage. So some of the pre-built connectors are some applications, databases, events, it could be files, functions, and so on. They have lots of uh, available uh, source connectors. Then. Uh, there is the normalization step where you just can perform some kind of transformation if you want, but 
uh, if that's not required of, or if that's not desired, you can just skip that the normalization step and directly load the data into your destination. Uh, but one thing that, especially when you are working on data warehouses, if you are really loading it into Snowflake, maybe, uh, sometimes you want to check if your data is in the format that you want it to be. Uh, you might, for example, want to remove uh, redundant data and you might want to dedupe the data that you have and so on. There is a limited number of transformation tools that you can use, but mostly Fivetran is used for extraction then loading it into the required destination. So the high level features of Fivetran is that you can adjust the sync frequency. Uh, by default, the sync frequency of Fivetran is six hours. So every six hours, your uh, Fivetran will look into your source. Once you set, for example, if you set uh, Amazon S3 as your source and Snowflake as your destination, uh, what Fivetran will do is on the first, uh, there will be an initial sync and on the initial sync, it will take all of the data from the specified S3 bucket and load it into your destination, which is Snowflake. Then every six hours, Fivetran will look into data that have changed. And if there is a change or if there is an additional data that, has, that is in S3 bucket, you can, uh, that, that file will be picked by Fivetran and it will be loaded into your destination. And the best thing about it is it won't load or it won't take data that it has already loaded and it will only be taking the data that is new uh, before the initial sync or be before the previous sync. And it's fully managed. It gives us 150 plus connectors and it's all UI and it takes care of the source schema change, data blocking, consumption, base pricing. So you'll only be charged it's expensive, Fivetran is really expensive, but uh, it's consumption-based pricing. You won't be charged for what you don't use. So uh, I think the way that the charge is based on the number of the number of rows that you think uh, or that you extract and finally load into your destination. Uh, but when you are working in an organization, you'll probably be working with millions of rows. Uh, and uh, when there is a business activity that takes data daily, that might uh, charge that business uh, much. So, the, but the best thing is that you will only be charged for what you use or for the sync that you make every six hours. It might be every day, it might be every week or so on. Based on your business need, you might, uh, you might specify the, uh, you might specify the sync frequency uh, as, as per your need, but uh, you can also, uh, the best, uh, the, the smallest amount of time that they specified is uh, syncing within a minute. It's near real time, but not exactly real time. Uh, but when you're working on big data on millions of records or billions of records, what you'd mostly do is you'll make a batch processing. So you you might set it uh, to the sync frequency, you might set the sync frequency to be daily or weekly or within six hours. So every six, if you set it to six hours, every six hours, it will go to the source and it will look for new data that hasn't been synced and fetch all the, the new data and load it to your destination. It will also handle all of the schema changes and everything. So this is one example that I've worked on. Uh, so in this uh, pipeline, in, in this data engineering pipeline, the sources, we have lots of sources. Some might be from SSCV data from, uh, it might be from social media data and so on. And others might be mostly, you'll also be working from with social media data such as Facebook, Instagram and so on. So, uh, and LinkedIn pages as well. So one thing that you can do is you can easily connect uh, your social media page with Fivetran and Fivetran will be able to ingest all of the data from the social media as well as other uh, non-structured or uh, is uh, or blob if, uh, in this case it's blob storage azure, azure blob storage and it also might be an aws s3 bucket and so on so it will it will sync all of the data within the specified frequency and load it to a data warehouse and in this case it's snowflake and on snowflake there is the transformation uh, being done by dbt so dbt will be able to transform our data once it has been loaded to our data warehouse so when following the ETL, the elt pipeline at first Fivetran will be able to extract the data from uh, our preferred source then it will load it it will perform the L part, which is the second in ALT, and it will load it into Snowflake. And finally, the T part comes 
by using dbt. So dbt will be able to transform our data once our data has been loaded to our data warehouse. Then finally, we can connect to an analytics tool. Uh, in this case, it's Looker, and Looker can work on, can work on analytics and visualize our data that we have aggregated uh, in our Mart or data warehouse. Okay, uh, going to the demo. Uh, we can easily set up uh, Fivetran in Snowflake. Both of them are really expensive, but uh, Andres? Uh, my internet's just disconnected when you just present the diagram. Can you uh, revise it real quick? Okay. Okay, so this is just one use case when uh, th that will use uh, the tools that I've mentioned, which is the Snowflake, the Python, and also dbt. So the first is your sources. You can specify different sources. Uh, some of them might be from social media. Some of them might be from Azure Blob Storage, AWS S3, and so on. So uh, Python can directly uh, connect to these available sources and sync the data to your preferred destination. And it will extract all of the data from the uh, from the specified sources and load them to your destination. In this case, Snowflake is the destination. And once our data is in the destination, we can use GBT to uh, make the transformations. And uh, mostly, we will be using GBT to make an aggregation because uh, we'll be using Snowflake for analytics purpose or OLAP. So uh, we'll make it, we'll, uh, we'll transform our data so that it's in a proper format for analytics. Mostly, we will we'll want to uh, we'll want to aggregate our data maybe by department, by organization, and so on, based on the business need. And after the after the transformations, we can connect our data warehouse to uh, an analytics tool. It might be Power BI, Tableau, Looker, uh, or even Redash. Then, once it's connected to our data warehouse by using the analytics tool, we can build a dashboard that can be presentable to our end users, customers, or so on based on our business end. Okay, Tamar, is, is it clear, uh, Internet, or do you want further explanation? Yeah, it's clear. Okay. No, Tamar? I'm trying to figure out how, where you can place uh, AFO, where if we decide to use AFO, and where will, the, will it be on this graph? Uh, maybe. Uh, the dbt part can be run by using airflow maybe but if you use dbt cloud there is also dbt cloud which can uh, uh, which can also orchestrate the task but uh, you can use airflow to uh, trigger dbt to do the transformation so uh, every six hours our data might be loaded from our source then to our destination which is snowflake and you might use uh, airflow as an orchestration tool so that our data transformation can happen on the specified time interval maybe every day or every week or so on, based on the business need. So where where Airflow stand is where DBT stand also? Yes, not always, but this is specific to this business use case, but yes. in different uh, business use cases, you might use Airflow uh, on different parts of the pipeline. Here, five time will handle the sync frequency of our data, so we don't need to use Airflow to uh, orchestrate the extraction and loading phase of our pipeline, but in the dbt or the transformation part, we might need to use Airflow so that we can orchestrate the task that the, the transformation part of the pipeline. And uh, another question is: is what is the other tool that we can use uh, for uh, syncing our data into the data warehouse? Uh, in place of Fivetran? Yes. Uh, th there are also other tools, but uh, we just wanted to let you know that uh, the most popular tools that are used in the industry, Fivetran and Snowflake are mostly used for data asset data warehouse and uh, as the EL part, Fivetran being used at the EL part, but there are also other tools that can be used for extraction and loading. I think one of them is Airbnb, Air yes, if I'm not wrong, Airbnb, there is a tool called Airbnb. You will also find other tools, but uh, some of them might be good on their pricing, but 
might not work well on the extraction and loading part. Some of them don't have enough connectors for your business needs and so on. So you'll be choosing based on different criteria. You'll be choosing the tool that works best for you. But knowing one of them well uh, will help you to figure out or work easily with other tools available. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mohammed? Uh, so to have a, a basic background, to have a, a basic understanding and to be aligned with, with the team. Uh, so we have to extract our data by five third. Is it, is it right? Yes. Uh, and to, to load our data to Snowflake. So Snowflake is like uh, a database or what is it? Uh, this is my first question. Um, my sec okay, go on, can I? Go on, go on. Uh, my, my second question is um, with DBT, which type of transformation that we need to, to do on the data? Okay. Is there another question or? Okay. So uh, for the first question, uh, Snowflake is mostly used as data warehouse, but uh, when you say that it's used as a data warehouse, it doesn't necessarily mean that we can use it as a data lake because data lakes, as we have uh, discussed earlier, data lakes are just used for uh, storing data that are structured well for the business need. So if you have a business need that needs uh, analytics for that, that needs for that use for analytics purpose or for uh, transactional purpose, data lakes might not be the right format. So you will need to restructure the data that so that it will meet your business need or, and, uh, for, for example, if it's a transactional type of business, you will mostly be structuring it into a database, but when you want to uh, visualize your data or work on some kind of analytics, you will structure it into a data warehouse. So Snowflake is mostly used as a data warehouse, but uh, you can use it as a database, data lake, and so on. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. And for the second question, what was the second question? Uh, the, my second question was about DBT. Which kind of transformation that we use uh, with DBT uh, to transform data? Yes. Okay. So you can use uh, you can work on any kind of transformation that you can when using pandas. I think uh, yes, pa pa pandas would be a good example for DBT. On pandas, you can cast your data into the desired. Uh, format, you can deduct your data, you can also uh, work on other type of transformations that you want. Similar to that, dbt will be using, dbt uses SQL for the transformation and all of the work that you are going to do is based on SQL and you can use SQL for transforming your data. You, you might be casting it, you might be aggregating the sum of uh, a specific sales, for example, you might be aggregating uh, maybe the average of a data or so on. Based on your business need, you can work any on any kind of transformation that you can when using Pandas in some more, because it's more specific to SQL. It's implemented using SQL. So uh, the, 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 the flow of the data uh, will be, uh, for example, if, if you want to use Airflow, we can't use Airflow with five track, right? We will use it uh, with DBT and uh, and uh, Snowflakes. Am I right? Okay. Uh, I, I think the right question would be, why do you want to use Airflow? Or why do you want to use Fivetran? Yes. Uh, one, one of the main advantage or the purpose that we are using Airflow on this week's challenge is to orchestrate the task, right? To orchestrate the data loading process and to also orchestrate the data transformation process. When you are using Fivetran, that part is already being orchestrated by using Fivetran. So you just don't want to use all available tools. You want to use tools that are relevant for your business. So when you are choosing the right type of tool or the right the, the tools that are going to work on, you will always ask which tools do I need for the business that I'm going to work on, for the type of business that I'm working on. If I need some kind of orchestration, if I need to uh, load data on a specified intervals. If I need uh, some kind of cron jobs, I will be using. I will be choosing those tools based on my requirement. So how 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 I uh, how I go? I'm going to uh, 
to automate and to automate the data flow. Okay, How so trigger yeah. uh, Okay, so maybe you might be asked uh, when you're working on a specific job, you might be asked to load data from specified source. It might be from a data lake, from an IoT device, on a specified interval. So uh, you might need to, to work on a batch processing at a specified interval, right? So you need something that will trigger your workflow so that it will load your data from your source to your destination. There, if it's available, you can use Fivetran if there is a source for that specific source, if there is a source connector in Fivetran for that specific source, and if your company already has Fivetran in the table. If not, you might be writing the scripts man. You yourself or data engineer might be responsible for writing those scripts for that implementation. So that you can load data on the specified interval. Okay. Just yes. Yes. Um, my question, my first question is about Snowflake and and Postgres. I think that Snowflake is playing the same role like uh, with with Postgres, right? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I think that Snowflake is is to store data, right? And yes. It's the same thing with with Postgres, right? Uh, I didn't get the last part that of what you said about the Postgres and Snowflake. Yeah, I'm trying to make a difference between them. I think I, 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 I'm picking that they have okay. the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so what's Postgres? Postgres is a database, right? Yes. Yes, and uh, as we have discussed earlier on this session, Postgres, uh, Snowflake can be used as a database, data warehouse, data lake, and so on. So, uh, okay, maybe when you go to the demo part, we can see. Uh, uh, okay, so this is Snowflake. You can you can create a free account of Snowflake, and it will give you a trial version for about thirty days. And once that trial period is over, uh, you they will start charging you, but you can create for free without, they don't even require a credit card and uh, other billing information. You just can create a free account using email address and they will give you access, they will give you a free trial. So once you create the free account of Snowflake, you can see that they are, you, uh, the way that it's organized is based on databases and on databases, there is section for staging, maybe for production and for different sources that you are ingesting from your uh, uh, from your source. And Postgres is a database, but a database is a specific thing that you can only store it for a transactional type of uh, business pro uh, business problem. Mostly used for transactional type of business problem. But either ways, you can use Postgres or Snowflake. It depends on the type of work that you want to do. Okay, now what about uh, what we are doing this week? Okay, so are for this, <laughs> yes. Okay, so for this week, uh, you want to uh, first extract your data, load it to your destination. You can use Postgres, you can also use Snowflake. Feel free to choose your destination. Uh, but because uh, Snowflake also gives you a free trial for about 30 days, it would be best to get comfortable working on Snowflake. But if not, Postgres will also work or even MySQL will also work. Okay, now my question is if it is possible to use, I'm trying to, uh, to uh, insert data in Postgres. Yes, it is. <laughs> Okay, maybe let me go to Fivetran and you can also create Fivetran for free. Uh, they will give you uh, a free trial for about 15 days. And this is the way that in their homepage, you can see that there are multiple available sources and uh, different multiple available destinations. So there's the BigQuery, there's Snowflake, Redshift. And I think this is uh, SQL database, yeah, it might be Postgres or uh, other SQL databases. So when you set up a connector, uh, but for this week, you, you don't have to use, uh, you shouldn't use 
five plan because you want you to use Airflow to orchestrate the task. So you can see that there is a, about 170 sources that you can choose. There is the Google Ads, Shopify, Facebook Ads, S3, Google Analytics, Google Drive, and many more. You can choose your data source from the available source connectors. And once you choose your source, you can go to your destination and uh, make sure that Python will uh, load the data after uh, extracting it from the source. So these are the available sources that you can choose from uh, from Python. Uh, so for example, let me just I'm choosing Google Sheets. So uh, it will first ask me the destination schema. So this destination schema is the schema that Fivetran is going to create on your uh, destination. So in our case, if you choose Snowflake as our destination, uh, Fivetran will create a destination schema with Google Sheets or the name that we specify. We can, we should also, this is also required. We should also specify the destination table, maybe uh, Google, Uh, Google Sheet table and we can authorize our task. So, uh, have time to be able to see all of our Google Sheets spreadsheets. I will allow that. Okay, so now that the authentication is successful, then I will have to specify the sheet URL. Uh, maybe let me. Mm. Just a minute, let me upload a CSV file to my Google Sheet and Okay, so once I've uploaded my data, I can specify the Google Sheet URL. Uh, this is being found. Refresh the page and Okay, I'm not sure why this is not being found, but uh, it would have been best if I showed you the uh, the destination part of the connectors. Uh, let me just skip this, but you can uh, first uh, set up your source. It might be Google Sheet or Azure Blob Storage, AWS S3, and so on. And uh, 
for example, when you are syncing data from Azure Blob Storage, you can also specify the type of the data format that you want to sync in. So uh, maybe let's say you have uh, a couple of uh, containers in your Azure Blob Storage, and you don't want to sync all of the data from your from all of the uh, containers. So the first thing that Python prompts you is let's maybe let's just go to. I have a question. So, so we are being exposed to Python for the sake of knowledge. Am I right? We are not going to use Python in, in this week project. Yeah, I think. He said that uh, since we are using Airflow, we won't be using. Uh, I'm sorry. I I was disconnected. Jesus? Yeah, Mohammed was asking if we will use uh, we use Fivetran this week, and I said no because you said that uh, since we are using Airflow to orchestrate the task, we won't, we won't be yes. using. Airflow. Yes. Yes. This is just to show you the tools that you uh, face when working on the industry, but. Uh, you won't be using Python for this week's, for this week's task. So in Azure Blob Storage, you can specify the destination table as you have seen in the Google Sheets. In the container name, you want to ingest data from a specific container in Azure Blob Storage. Then uh, there is something con called connection string that you can set uh, on Azure, and this will give you access to your Azure container, to your Azure uh, Blob Storage. Their pass, this is optional, but uh, if you want to choose specific type of file, specific type of files from your Azure Blob Storage or from your source, you can specify, you can give a Rex expression so that Python will uh, be matching to those files only and we will. And this is. Uh, this was true for other types of source connectors. You can specify the type of file formats that you are ingesting from your source, and uh, Python only looking uh, for data matching the file uh, expression that is specified here with the file Python. Uh, Andre, we won't also be using uh, Snowflake, right? Because, like, uh, Yabba, Yabba when, when he just demonstrated the project, he uh, suggested that we use uh, Postgres instead instead of like MySQL for data, data warehouse. Yes, yes, uh, that I'm just using Postgres, but uh, feel free to experiment out other tools if you have time. You, you might not get time, but it's space to get comfortable with Snowflake and other data tools. I don't think others yeah. are uh, free or they give you, I don't think they give you free access. Uh, Snowflake will give you every access for our service, so it will be a very good experience for you to experiment out on Snowflake and have a good understanding of the working structure of Snowflake. Uh, okay, any other question? Yeah, um, my question is if we can use MySQL in the same way as Postgres. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. If we can use MySQL. For this week? Yeah. Uh, I think just use Postgres and there will be another challenge that uh, you'll work on, which is the database migration part. So uh, you'll be migrating the data from your current database to another database. So in that challenge, you'll, you can use MySQL. But for now, just use Postgres and you'll be migrating the data because uh, it's it's best to have an understanding of different databases that you'll most probably be working on uh, when you are working on the industry. Okay, Antena? Uh, Joseph, is it another question or? No, it's clear. Okay, Antena? Uh, just to clarify, MySQL is the same as Postgres or uh, more or less can do the same things, right? 
yes, it can do the same thing. But mostly, I think these days, uh, most companies are using Postgres, are shifting from Snowflake, I mean, from MySQL to uh, Postgres. But you can do the same thing when using Postgres, uh, when you are, you can use the same thing that you can use uh, on MySQL. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I have a question. Just uh, if, uh, for example, if we are going to use Postgres, so can you say the technical part, how we can connect? Actually, for example, I installed the Postgres. So okay. uh, next task is just, I wanted to extract the given source or the file. Uh, in our case, it is the Excel file. So uh, are we going to, how, how, how are we going to transform the data into the Postgres? Okay, so uh, you're using Airflow as the orchestration tool, right? So uh, you need to write a script. So in Airflow, there are uh, multiple scripts that you, multiple operators that you can use. One of them is the Python operator. There is also the bash operator and so on. So you can write a Python script that will read the data from your source, which is the CSV file, then load it to your, uh, to your desired destination. In this case, it might be Postgres. So Airflow will be able to trigger that task on the specified schedule interval and load it to your destination. So extracting and loading will happen in your Python script or bar scripts that you are going to write and Airflow will be able to uh, schedule that and execute it on the specified interval. Okay, okay, thank you. So just look into the different operators that are available in Airflow and uh, there is the Python. You uh, you might use the Python or the Bash operator. I think you can also use others if you want. But uh, you will be writing a script in Python or Bash that will ingest the data from your source and load it to your destination. That's going to be the business logic. Okay. okay. In Airflow, we orchestrate it. Orchestrate that. Uh, Johannes. Uh, Johannes, are you there? Okay, Margaret. Hello. Okay, Johannes, go on. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, my question is: Can you can you just give us a general image of the the week's challenge? I mean, uh, I mean, what we are supposed to do, or the the, the general flow of the tasks. Okay. Uh, In the Tinakayami, maybe let me go to the. I'm still showing my screen, right? Okay. Uh, so, look five. Okay, so, uh, You will be first downloading the data from the uh, from the source, and after downloading the data, um, yes, after downloading the data, you you will be using as your data warehouse MySQL or Postgres. Uh, just to be consistent, consistent, maybe uh, everyone can use Postgres for this week's for this week's task and. Uh, we can switch back to MySQL on the next week's challenge or uh, the challenge that we are going to give you. We will be giving you, will be giving you a challenge to migrate the data from your current data warehouse to another data warehouse. So in the next challenge, you can use the MySQL, but for now, everyone uh, can use the Postgres. So after you get your data, after you extract your data, the first phase is extracting. Uh, you should write a script in Airflow using Python or maybe Bash you can use this Python and Airflow will be able to orchestrate the task. So Airflow will schedule on a scheduled basis, Airflow will be able to execute the script that you wrote using Python or Bash. And that script will be to load your data, but first we'll be able to ingest that CSV file and load it to your data warehouse. 
So that will be your business logic, which will just load your data and uh, uh, putting it on Snowflake or not on Snowflake, but on your data warehouse. It might be Postgres or MySQL. And this will happen only once for this case, but when working on the actual industry, data may, might be coming every day or every hour or so on. So you might write a script, an Airflow script that will be executing the task maybe every daily, maybe hourly or so on. So, but for this one, it will only be loading it once. And after that, it has been loaded into uh, your data warehouse, which is the, uh, which is Postgres, you can use dbt to make transformation. So the dbt will be connected to your destination, which is uh, Postgres. And after getting all of your data, dbt will be able to get uh, will be able to connect to your destination and uh, make some kind of transformation that can be used for the analytics part. So for the reporting environment, will be you'll be using Redash, and Redash will just be you'll be you'll just be building a dashboard by using Redash based on the transform data that you have worked using dbt. So dbt is just a transforming tool, which is the, the, the which is which stands for database uh, build tool, and by transforming your data, you'll make it, you'll make your data more suitable for the analytics part. So for the dashboard you'll be building, your data will already have been suitable after uh, making some kind of transformation using dbt. And by using Redash, Redash will be able to connect directly to your uh, data warehouse. And based on the script that you wrote for, uh, dash for the dashboard, you'll get some uh, dashboards that you want for the business part. So it's an LT pipeline. The first one is the extraction, then loading to the data warehouse and transformation using dbt. And finally, the reporting part or the dashboard building part using Redash. But on the actual industry, the tech stacks might change. Mostly the dbt and the airflow uh, might remain the same and even the data warehouse might remain the same, but You'll be, you'll also, you might also see uh, Snowflake as data warehouse, and for the especially for the reporting part, you might use uh, Tableau, Power BI, Looker, and so on. Any available dashboard building tool. Is it clear, or thank you? Or yes. Even yes. anyone, uh, do you need any explanation, or are you having any challenge uh, on understanding the this week's uh, task or challenge? Okay, good job. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so my question is, uh, what, what what's expected of us for the interim submission today? Uh, okay, so for the interim submission, so uh, you'll have a link to your GitHub. So we expect from you that you, you should already have implemented some part of the logic of Airflow, and you should at least start the implementation of dbt. So you can generate uh, a lineage graph from dbt. A lineage, a lineage graph is nothing but uh, your DAG pipeline of dbt. So dbt is also able to produce or to build uh, a direct acyclic graph, which works the same way that, that Airflow works, and it will connect to your source then do some kind of transformation and finally uh, put it back into your data warehouse. And it will build this data lineage graph. And after serving it on the docs by using dbt docs generate and dbt docs serve, you can be able to look at the data lineage of your data. And we require you to put some screenshot of data lineage of your dbt and uh, part of the implementation of Airflow. It might not be perfect, but we will at least be able to see that you have progressed on the Airflow and dbt part. And for the report, you just have to write a report which will explain about the text stack that you used by using a diagram and a description. Okay, so in the in our Airflow DAGs, we're supposed to extract the data and then put it in our, <clears throat> in our destination uh, data warehouse, which, which will be Postgres, and then we'll, like connect the dbt to our postgres data warehouse and then do some type of 
the transformation and then uh, like export it to uh, uh, like like do some type of reporting and extract the data lineage is that am i correct yes that will be the goal of the entire project but for the interim submission we need to uh, we need to at least be able to see your airflow scripts your dark scripts and your uh, dbt scripts as well so once you start your dbt implementation uh, after even trying to load the data using dbt and just selecting the source and uh, loading it back to the destination you can generate the lineage graph okay uh, and my final question is uh, when will we be having the dbt uh, tutorial because yesterday we only saw the airflow tutorial yes i think we will be having that in the afternoon session yes we'll be having that in the afternoon session okay thank you okay margaret hi my question is on transformations of data and the data itself so we when we download the data it's a csv and we're supposed to do some kind of transformations to uh, to show it uh, to show our data on the dashboard. My question is, what kind of transformations exactly are we supposed to perform on this data, and uh, what what exactly should I see on the dash on my final dashboard? Like, should I see a spot for downloading the data? The, the data in a CSV format, or am I supposed to like show uh, the traffic data itself? Uh, okay, so uh, maybe let's just say that you are working on an exploratory data analysis. What's the first thing that you want to explore from your data? Or what's the first thing that you want to visualize from your data? For this week, it should be simple. You just can maybe aggregate or uh, when you are working on a dashboard, on analytics dashboard, or even exploratory data analysis using Python, what you will do is you, you might just group the data by specific fields and uh, display the aggregation of those fields, right? And rank them based on the highest, maybe uh, uh, flow, traffic flow, maybe just for example, it might be based on the price and so on. So, on the dashboard part, the transformation that you are going to work on will be used for the dashboard part. So you want to use transformations that will help you for the analytics part. So if the data isn't in the right format for the analysis or for the dashboard building part, you won't benefit much from the transformation tool that you are going to use. So you can aggregate the data based on some specific fields so that you can just ingest the data and put it into the into the dashboard. Mm. Is it not clear or what? Um, no, not really. Okay, what exactly uh, do, do you want me to explain? Maybe just reach the transformation first and have a good understanding of the data that you are working and you'll be able to look at some kind of uh, at ways that you need to uh, visualize your data so when working on EDA on the previous challenge you're making some kind of EDA or exploratory data analysis by using graphs right by using diagrams right yeah so you were choosing those specific types of diagrams for the specific type of data that you are working on based on the type of based on the type of data format and based on the type of the data that you are working so on this week it might be related to traffic and you just can see or you just can have a look and understand that you want to extract specific type of information on your dashboard by aggregating the data so okay. dbt comes really handy when aggregating it's the same like a scale it's you can do which is also the same as python you can group your data based on, by using some fields and after grouping it maybe let's say uh, 
Can someone tell me about the data fields that are in the data set that you have downloaded? Have you seen the data that you are working on? What are the fields? It, it's, each row has a data of a single vehicle. And then mm. the first 10 columns in the first row include the column names. Okay. And the first four columns include information about trajectory, like mm. uh, unique track ID, type of vehicle, distance traveled. Yes, uh, just for example, that one thing that I can tell you is you might maybe group it by the type of the car, for example, and uh, aggregate the total distance traveled by each type of the car. So these type of car are traveling higher than other types of car and so on. You can make some kind of analysis related to the data that you're working on. So you can, you can group it by the type of the truck or type of the car that uh, that's available in the, the data set and after grouping it you can make an aggregation maybe if there is a speed column which car is the fastest one you can also visualize that in your, on your dashboard maybe in the trajectory you can uh, visualize or build your dashboard to view at the trajectories of each type of car by grouping it by the truck type or car type Okay, um, can I ask one last question? Sure, go ahead. Uh, on the challenge, uh, the challenge document, there was the part of um, using Travia to read the data. Um, I, I was just confused if that part is uh, the transformations part. Uh, on which section? Uh, on the data section. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, to uh, the the last one, you may use the following GitHub yes. packages to this visualize. Is just, and okay. This package will just help you. Uh, those are data endpoints for the traffic data actually collected from different, uh, by using different sensors. Uh, I think it's drones. And uh, we can actually analyze or uh, we can visualize those data based on the trajectories. And this will just help you to okay, uh, uh, this will just help you or give you a guide how you can uh, visualize the data that is given for the project for the available trajectories but for the for this week's task you won't be using that part you just have to load the data and the transformation in the visualization part is to be done on a separate script okay. this will just serve for you as a reference okay okay then uh, i think i'm um, sorry okay <laughs> go on no no problem okay the dashboard we're creating is basically for anyone to access the data anyone anywhere yes right? yes okay okay thank you okay uh okay then i think we can wrap our session uh we'll have a session in the afternoon internet does that mean uh it's a follow-up question to the last question of more great that does mean like uh it needs to be hosted somewhere to like visualize the data uh that would be a plus if you can host the the visualization or the analytics uh to some kind of dashboard by building it in some kind of dashboard but the the best thing about using redash in some other tools is you can programmatically build the dashboard so uh, i'm not sure about this but when using uh, tools like power bi i don't think you have programmatic access to uh build the visualizations from your Python script uh, or other programming language scripts, but I'm not sure about that. But when using Redash, you can programmatically build your visualization and host that to a, on, a, on a web server. That would be a plus. If It would be great if you can do that. If not, you can just upload the, the screenshots of your dashboard and uh, we can see at, on what you have worked. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, then uh, we'll meet in the afternoon session.
And yes, uh, feel free to ask on the Slack channel if you have any question.